Episode 3 of Part 3 of the Thousands of Blood Anime is finally here, after what seemed like an eternal wait after last week's stellar episode, where, if you recall, Yuvark manipulated Ichigo into killing the Soul King, thus causing the collapse of the three worlds as there is no longer a powerful entity holding them together. Episode 3 is centred around the backstory of Captain Ukitake, one of my personal favourite captains in the series, and the newly added backstory to his character only made me appreciate him more. We also got the much anticipated return of one of the most well loved antagonists of all time, Aizen Sosuke. So, without further ado, let's dive into episode 3 The Dark Arm. The episode begins with Ukitake activating the Kamikake to prepare himself to become the right hand of the Soul King, before cutting back in time to when Ukitake was 3 years old. As a small child, Ukitake developed a lung disease which was unable to be treated properly by doctors. As a result, Ukitake's parents took him to Mumihagi Shrine, in one final desperate attempt to save the son's life, praying for Mumihagi to take the son's lungs and grant him life, which it did. The scene where Ukitaki accepts Mumihagi was so well done. I love the purple colours here, it contrasts very nicely with the black. Fast forward a few years, and now, Ukitaki seems to be in much better shape. He is able to move around freely, thanks to the power of Mumihagi inside of him. Yet, although he could still move around and live his life like any other person would, he still gets a very grim reminder of the illness that once plagued him, as you see him coughing up blood, a reminder of the lung disease that still affects his body. Cutting forward again into the future, and now, Ukidaki has entered the Soul Reaper Academy, beginning his training to become a full Soul Reaper. Here, we see the start of his friendship with fellow Captain Shinsui as they practice swordsmanship skills. Also, I do have to say, it was very bittersweet to see all the old Soul Reapers again, like old Manyama, Sasukebe, and Captain Unohana when they were younger as of course, in the present, all three of them now dead as a result of the Von der Reich's first invasion back in Core 1. The genuine friendship between Ukitaki and Shinsui is kind of heartwarming. We see Shinsui showing the sickly captain his favourite sweet shop, which of course has alcohol in the sweets, which he then unfortunately gives to some young kids. It's these moments of banter between these two that makes this duo so likeable in my opinion. As the seasons change, Ukitaki finally shows Shinsui the shrine of Mimihagi, yet it appears that Shinsui is already knows about it through rumours that he had heard from among the noble families, as the two discuss various theories about, about Mumihagi, such as it being a part of the Soul King. Central 46 also makes an appearance in this episode, questioning Ukitaki's choice to not have another lieutenant out of respect for Kai and Shiba, who very tragically died while battling Hollows. Kai, of course, is Captain Ukitaki's former lieutenant and Ruki's mentor within the 13th Division and he was someone that everyone within the 13th Division held great respect and admiration for. Central 46 makes the point that it was Sukitaki's failing health that allowed Kain to die. Yet, the captain stands firm and states he isn't interested in getting another lieutenant, stating that if he cannot handle the duties of a captain by himself, then he will end up dying. We then get another brief scene with the duo of Shinsui and Ukitaki, which Shinsui stated that it wasn't Ukitaki's time to die on the day of Kain's death. The final Ukitaki flashback takes place after what appears to be the first invasion of the Soul Society by Yu Havak and his forces, and before Unohana's final battle with Kenpachi, as Shinsui, Ukitaki, and Captain Unohana all mourn the death of Head Captain Yamamoto. At the end of the flashback, there looks to be possibly a tease for the Hell Arc, or maybe a bit in the Copium, with Captain Ukitaki telling Unohana that he will be seeing her very soon. Now in the present, Ukitaki starts to become the right hand of the Soul King. To grim sigh, as he states, every organ inside his body now belongs to Mimihagi, even his heart. Before he completes the ritual, he leads the 30th division in Ruki's capable hands. Blood begins to spew from Ukitaki's mouth as the ritual nears its completion. The anime staff made this moment beautifully haunting with the blood, and Ukitaki's eyes losing their pupils as Mimihagi appears. We then cut over to where we last left off with episode 2. The Soul King is dead, having been killed by Ichigo while Yu Havak and the rest of Ichigo's friends watch. As Yu Havak is still using the Almighty, he is able to easily evade all of Ichigo's attacks, while Yurichi and Orihime make a plan to use Orihime's healing powers to restore the Soul King. Naturally, this doesn't end up working, as a mere human is unable to restore such a powerful being. The episode then ends with undoubtedly the most hype scene in this core so far, which is of course the unsealing of the goat, Aizen Sosuke, inside Mukun. Words can't describe how much aura Aizen has here. His spiritual pressure alone is enough to cut this idiot prison guard's fingers off, and I can't wait to see him next week as Shinsui makes a deal with the devil 
in order to save the Soul Society. Yet again, it's another incredible episode from Kubo and the anime staff. We got to see expanded Ukitake lore and the return of the false god, Aizen Sosuke, as well as Chad and even Yurichi getting in on the action against U of Arc. Let me know what your thoughts are on this episode, and I'll see you again next week for episode 4, The Betrayer, which looks like an Uryu episode given the poem at the end.